Hi, and welcome to In The Making Dot Blog, a video production. In our last video, we discussed the topic of the digital divide and what that means with a little bit of help from our special guest. Thanks, Grandma. Today, we'll be looking at the digital divide a little bit further and reviewing whether or not technological advancements are helping to minimize this divide or whether or not they're in fact increasing the divide. We'll also be having a look at other technological innovations and seeing where in our society we're helping to minimize gaps using these advancements. So to recap from our last video, the digital divide can be defined as the gap between those that have access to technology and those that don't, or as Morley defines them as the have and the have nots. Reasons for this can include, but are not limited to, geographical location, financial status, or low levels of education. You might be thinking to yourself, why is this important? Why do we need to have equal access to technology? Well, the United Nations has listed having access to the internet as a basic human right. Crazy, huh? Having access to the internet is now considered in the same importance as having access to food, shelter, and clean drinking water. The reason for this is that the internet allows individuals to access other basic human rights, which we'll talk about a little bit further on in this video. With this in mind, we can see that the internet plays a major role in the digital divide, as without access, individuals are left at a significant disadvantage. Access to the internet allows individuals information resources and educational tools, which help to empower them to further their education, which will open up new career pathways and in turn, benefit the economy. Stephanie Huffman in her paper, The Digital Divide Revisited, What Is Next? provides the contention that we need to monitor the definition of the digital divide and the goals in which we have in minimizing this divide for this very reason. As on a societal level, e-commerce makes up 21% of economic growth in developed nations. Technological innovations such as the National Broadband Network in Australia and free Wi-Fi networks are examples of ways in which governments and organisations are aiming to reduce the digital divide by attempting to provide broader access to people in remote or rural locations or for those that may not be able to afford home internet or phone plans with sufficient data. By reducing our digital divide, we are also reducing other divides in our society, such as access to education and employment. The introduction of e-learning has helped to increase the number of people who are able to access education, as there are a number of reasons as to why someone may not be able to attend a physical school to be able to access learning facilities. Whether this be their general health and well-being, financial situation, or physical location. E-learning allows flexibility for learners to be able to choose to work full-time as well as study, learn from remote locations, or if you're like me, study from home in bed, snuggled up with your two puppies. With increased access to education comes increased access to employment. Individuals are empowered to be able to upskill at any stage or change careers without significant detriment to their current lifestyles. Availability of internet also offers a wider range of employment due to versatility and the ability to work from any location at any time. So I can be sitting on my couch at midnight eating ice cream whilst working for a company in France. Or more realistically, this can be helpful for those that might otherwise struggle to find employment through traditional methods, such as someone with a disability, physical or mental health issues, or those who need to stay at home full time to care for others. As an infinite resource, the internet allows us to minimize many divides through our society through the power of information, as well as through helping to drive social and cultural change through communication. Campaigns such as the Me Too movement and Black Lives Matter would not have been able to gain as much traction as they have without the internet or social media. To take a look at the topic of social media activism and their ability to drive social change, feel free to have a listen to my one and only podcast, which I've left a link in the description box down below for you. 
So to finish up, we can see that the internet might have helped to create gaps in our society, such as the digital divide, but it has also helped to minimize other gaps in other areas and also help to drive social and cultural change through the power of communication. Now to hear your thoughts on the topic. If you want to drop me a line in the comment section below, let me know all of your thoughts. Also, if you have any other suggestions from, for videos that you would like to see from my channel, please let me know. And until next time, thanks for watching.